In my last video I discussed what an index fund was and why they're a great place for beginners to start on their investing journeys. It appears you all enjoyed it, so in this video I want to extend the conversation to exploring the various ways to invest in the leading New Zealand index, the NZX50. Many of you will already be on Sharesies and invest now, so I'll be covering all of your options on these platforms. I will also be following up this video with another on how to invest in the leading US index fund, the S&P 500. So make sure you subscribe to my channel down below to make sure you don't miss it. For those of you that haven't seen my previous video, an index fund simply allows you to invest your money across a large number of stocks all in one go. Index funds provide an easy way to invest in the stock market as you don't need to research individual stocks worry about the current traded price, or any of the other things that may be putting you off investing in the first place. Historical studies have shown that on average, broad-based index funds even beat the returns of the investment professionals on Wall Street. If you want to learn more about this, click on the link above to see my previous video, and then afterwards circle back to this one. So there are a few preliminary things you need to know first before we get into the funds. The first is how the fund is weighted. Weighting refers to the percentage of the fund represented by a single stock. For example, if we look at the current list of NZX50s provided by interest.co.nz, we can see that Fisher & Paykel Healthcare currently has a weighting of 10.9%. What this means is that for every $1,000 that you put into an NZX50 fund, 109 of this will be invested into Fisher & Paykel Healthcare stock. Among the various NZX50 index funds on the market, they all fit into one of two camps with regards to how they weight. There is the standard NZX50 fund which does not cap individual holdings, and what they call a portfolio fund that caps the weighting of each stock to a maximum of 5%. Let's start by looking at the standard NZX50 index fund. If we take another look at the interest.co.nz table, you'll see the weighting here is not capped as the Fisher & Paykel Healthcare stock exceeds 5% weighting. Without a cap, this is what we expect to see for the larger companies with a size many times bigger than most on the New Zealand exchange. The larger the capitalization, or size of the business, the greater their weighting will be. The downside to not capping the weightings is that you may have a concentration risk in your portfolio, where there is a greater proportion of the fund invested in a smaller number of the larger companies. As such, the Portfolio NZX50 Index was created, with many fund managers offering these funds instead of, or as well as, the uncapped alternative, to reduce the concentration risks. The second thing to know is that the funds may have different tax treatments. If you're a New Zealand tax resident, some funds are portfolio investment entities, or PIE for short, have a different tax rate applied than the one from your income. If you've signed up for an investment platform, such as Sharesies or InvestNow, you've already disclosed this in the app during sign up. While the highest income tax bracket in New Zealand is currently 39%, the highest you'll be taxed in a PIE fund is 28%. As a general rule, I don't really go too much in depth around taxes, as they are so dependent on your personal situation. So make sure before investing, you do your own research around this. And lastly, the third thing to know is that every fund will be slightly different in their holdings and returns. Index funds, and the indexes themselves, are never perfectly aligned in their returns and holdings, for a variety of reasons. What this means is that if you Google NZX50, the daily movement shown there will rarely be the same as for your NZX50 index fund. One reason is fees, where the fund manager will extract their fee progressively over time from the value of the fund. A second reason is the nature of the fund, such as in the case of an ETF, where the price of the units depends on the investor demand and supply on the stock exchange. This will vary in the short term from the value of the underlying stock holdings of the fund, but in the long run should roughly match up. A third reason is that some funds will hold a little bit of cash, meaning the index is 100% invested, whereas for a fund it might only be 99%. And as a result, this would cause it to lag from the index returns. And lastly, though the fund managers try their very best, they can only reweight the portfolio at certain times of the year, which may not align with the timing S&P Global does. They are the ones that created the indexes that each fund manager is trying to replicate as close as they can. So now let's get into the NZX50 funds. For standard funds that don't cap, we have SmartShares, Macquarie Asset Management, Simplicity, and Kernel. On the cap side, we have SmartShares, Superlife, and Harbour Asset Management. I'll be giving a bit of flavour on each, lightly covering who the fund manager is, what the fund covers, what the fees are, and the investment platforms that offer the funds. So let's start with SmartShares. They currently offer two funds, the NZ Top 50 ETF, which caps individual holdings to 5%, and the NZX50 ETF, which is uncapped. Their tickers on the stock market are FNZ for the capped fund, and NZG for the uncapped fund. Their FNZ fund currently has around $600 million invested, and was created all the way back in 2004. It currently charges a management fee of 0.5%, meaning that for every $1,000 you invest in the fund, 
SmartShares takes $5 a year out of the fund's value for their administration costs. It also pays an annual dividend yield of just over 2.5%, meaning that in June and December, you will receive a payment from SmartShares just for holding this fund. As we scroll down, you can see the holdings, and though we said the cap is 5% for this fund, you can see a few names are above that. What this means is that since the portfolio reweighting, the price of these stocks has increased, meaning their share of the fund has increased too. At the next reprice, which is when they buy and sell to realign the fund, SmartShares will bring this back in line with the 5% cap. As we scroll down, we can see how the fund has performed relative to the index, which as we can see has been pretty close. So that's the FNZ fund. Their NZG fund was launched recently in 2020, has $390 million invested, and lucky for us has a lower fee of just 0.2%. This is likely due to them not having to reweight their portfolio as much, due to it being uncapped. The dividend yield is slightly lower at just under 2.5%. And when we scroll down, you can see pretty familiar names to the FNZ fund. However, the larger companies here, of course, have a much larger weighting. Just like the FNZ fund, this one too has followed the index pretty closely. So that rounds out SmartShares. Next up is Superlife, which is also under the NZX group of companies. I won't spend much time here as these funds simply invest in the SmartShare funds, but rudely take a higher fee. They offer two funds, namely the NZ Top 50 fund and a New Zealand Shares fund. However, at a quick glance, they both look to be pretty much the same thing investing in the same FNZ fund. These funds are available through KiwiSaver, commanding a fixed admin fee of $30 a year and a management fee of 0.59%. You can also invest directly through their website for a fixed cost of $12 and management fees of 0.49%. In total, they have an excess of $100 million under management. Now let's take a look at Macquarie Asset Management. They have a single offering, the NZ Shares Index Fund, which is an uncapped fund similar to NZG that we covered earlier. It was started in 2017, is managed by AMP, has over $130 million invested, and charges an annual management fee of 0.31%. You can find this fund listed on Invest Now. Simplicity also offer an NZX50 fund, called the New Zealand Share Fund, which has a whopping $882 million invested in it, the largest we'll be covering. It was started in 2018, is uncapped, and has built a reputation for their extremely low fees of just 0.1% per annum. Among the uncapped funds, they are the least expensive by some margin. You can invest with Simplicity directly through their website. Next up, we have Kernel, which has a unique NZX50 fund called the New Zealand 50 ESG Tilted Fund. The difference with this fund is they don't weight according to market capitalization like some of the other funds. Instead, they weight the NZX50 companies according to their commitment to the ESG principles. This is the only fund of its type in New Zealand, and to deliver it, they would have worked very closely with S&P Global to create the index. The fund has a management fee of 0.25% per annum, and only if you have over $25,000 invested with Kernel is there an additional $5 a month administration fee. You can invest directly with them through their website, which from my experience is very easy to use. And lastly, we have Harbour Asset Management, who offer a fund named NZ Index Shares Fund for New Zealand investors. Like FNZ we covered earlier, they cap individual holdings to 5% as well. However, they do so for a lower management fee of just 0.2%. The fund was started in 2014, and from their investor documentation, reportedly have $330 million invested in this fund, which is around the same levels as SmartShares. You can find this fund listed on Invest Now, or you can find more information and invest through their website. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned more about the current offerings in the market for those wanting to invest in an NZX50 index fund. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more just like it, please make sure to subscribe to my channel down below. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.